Hey guys, time for another redneck engineering video. Like millions of other people all over the world, we have a Keurig. And I decided that I wanted to replace my basic Keurig with one that was a little bit fancier and kind of went with my kitchen a little bit more. It was gray and I just thought that was really nice and it was a little bit more slimline. So I had read some bad reviews about how people were having their Keurig die over a very short period of time, which seemed kind of strange to me because we had our other one forever and ever and it was fine. But lo and behold, the problem happened to us. But Joe will look on the internet for solutions for stuff and don't you know he found one. Our Keurig was saying that it needed to be descaled. So he ran the descaler and as soon as it was done, it wouldn't turn back on. Couldn't get the power on for anything. So he actually found the solution. So we wanted to go ahead and share it with you guys because the Keurig's like, I think it was like 135 or 145, something like that, that I paid for this Keurig. It was not cheap. I hate to have to replace it. And I know a lot of you feel the same. So if it's a cheap fix, I just wanted to go ahead and share it with you in hopes that this might help somebody else out. So I'm going to let Joe go ahead and explain it. So this is the Keurig in question. Joe put some blue painter's tape on it because he knew where he was taking it apart. He didn't want to take a chance on damaging it. All right, Joe, what is it that you have to do in order to get this fixed? Well, the short version is I got to take the case apart, look for the thermal overload switch, which has got a little reset pin hole right in the center of the thermal switch. I'm going to push it with a paper clip and hopefully that simple fix will fix it. Hopefully that will fix it because I don't want to get rid of this machine. It's really not very old. We probably had it maybe six months and we each have a cup of coffee in the morning and then sometimes we'll have one in the afternoon. It's not like it gets used commercially or anything like that. So the fact that it's this old and seems to have already died is kind of disturbing, but hopefully this fix will do it. All right, explain to me what it is that you're going to do. Okay, so we're going to take off the water reservoir. Okay. Get that out of the way. We're going to take off the riser. Get that out of the way. We're going to flip the unit over because what we've got to do is we've got to find three little hidden screws. Okay, I'm going to come over here. This might be a better spot. Okay. Hang on. Okay, so we've got a, a little slider marked A. That's where one of the little hidden screws is. We're going to pull that out. Now you can see the screw. Okay. Also, these little rubber feet. We're going to take the handy dandy pair of needle nose pliers from Harbor Freight and we're going to pull these little rubber feet off. Don't lose it. Don't put it down the garbage disposal. You'll be sorry. Uh, all right, now the little rubber feet are off. So then what's the next step? So we're going to take those three little hidden screws out. Three, I've seen one. There's one. The other two are where I took those little rubber plugs out. Oh, OK. They're actually down in there. A number one Phillips is a perfect size to use down in there so you don't strip the heads. I didn't know there was numbers on screwdrivers. It, yeah, there is. A lot of people don't know. All number one means is it's really pointy on the end. Awesome. We've got a whole bunch of little tab holes. And what we need to do is move those little tabs. Show me where they are. Okay. We got a bunch well, of tab holes. So like there and back here and there and there and over here and over there. Okay. Those little tab holes, we want to push the little tabs towards the center so it releases oh. the locks on the plastic. Okay. And then we can pull the case apart. Okay. At least that's the theory. <laughs> awesome. Do you have to do both tabs at once? Don't know the answer to that because I've never taken one of these apart yet. So you can actually feel it? Yeah, you can actually feel it. It kind of feels like a spring loaded. Oh, okay. And so I'm going to take something really narrow. Let's say you can use a screwdriver, but I'm going to use a kind of a putty knife. Okay. And I'm going to kind of pry that out of the way, put that in there, and just kind of try to start working it around to see if I can get that case starting to pry loose. This looks like something maybe I shouldn't be watching. Do you think? <laughs> One eternity later. Okay, so the case is finally off there. I don't know how long it took us to take that thing off, but both of us working on it, it probably took 30, 40 minutes. 
40 minutes later. 40 minutes later. I was about ready to say, you know what? Let's just go buy a new Keurig. No wonder they sell so many coffee pots. Who, who knew that was going to be so difficult? Those tabs, you literally have to push all the tabs at the same time. That's pretty much impossible. So there was a lot of prying. There was almost swearing, but I finally walked away from it and let Joe finish it off. We had it about 95% done and absolutely couldn't get that thing to open for anything. Anyhow, here's what we got. Okay, so now here's the guts of the Keurig. And what you're looking for is, so you find that thing that looks all coiled up and everything. And then there's that little white circle thing up above where the wires are attached. There's a hole directly in the center of that. Push in that center hole with a paper clip. It will reset the thermal overload so that your coffee pot will come on once again. So let's go ahead and try this. So the paper clip is in that hole right now. With his hand up there, I absolutely can't get the camera up to see it. But that is the hole where you put the paper clip and you just press that reset button. So now we're gonna take our voltmeter and we already know before that it showed an open circuit with that indicator of one. If you touch the leads together, it should show about zero. If I've successfully reset that switch, it should show about zero. It means zero resistance because I've got it on the voltmeter scale. I'm going to see if I can tell what he's doing in here. I don't think I can. And the good news is it's reset. So if you look down here at the meter, it shows zeros. Okay, see, so right now it shows open because I haven't touched the other one. Here I am, I'm touching it zeros which means that that overload switch is reset so we're gonna try now just with it disassembled by the way folks don't touch anything electrical because you might get shocked don't try this at home or do try this at home just don't get shocked don't touch anything <laughs> when we plug it in we'll we'll say it's got power available so let's find out Hey, look, and the little D-scale light still did not reset properly, but you know what? At this point, we're not going to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see if we can't get it to run some water. The good thing is it's open, so you can press the reset button again if you have to. That's right. Oh, I heard it. Oh. All right, let me see if I can get this here. Oh, yeah. He couldn't even get the power button to come on before. It said no. So the cabinet is back on the Keurig. The Keurig, he had to run it three different times in the descale mode in order to get the light to go out. So the power is on and the descale light is out. You know what that means. It's time for coffee. It is working. Check out that new mug. We had to get a set of four. Because Joe's spoiled. Love our Harry Potter cups. They're so nice and they're comfortable. And I think they were like 21 bucks a piece or something, but I love them. It, it was hard packing them in the suitcase in an already full suitcase. So Joe's having coffee now in his new, his wizarding world of Harry Potter coffee mug. Yeah, check and out the his castle. new t-shirt. I am thrilled that our Keurig is fixed. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. I am so thankful that he is genius and will look things up online or take things apart and just see if he can figure it out because otherwise we'd be shelling out another 130 or 150 bucks for another Keurig. So this way we don't have to. If you are new to this channel, please hit that like and subscribe and ring bell notification so you don't miss out on the latest and greatest. Also, please don't forget to check out some of our other great videos we have on the parks, the rides, resorts, resort rooms, Skyliner rides, day trips, car shows, outdoor pizza oven videos, Universal Studios, Islands of Adventure, and Disney World. Thank you so much for watching.